We can speak now to San Ho Tree, the director of the Drug Policy Project at the Institute for Policy Studies. He's in Washington, D.C. Thanks very much for, for being with us. So do you think these murders will, will be properly investigated and we'll ever find out actually who committed them? Well, unusual for this case, they've referred it to the National Bureau of Investigations, uh, which is different from the Philippine National Police. The Philippine National Police has a horrible, horrible record of prosecuting their own people. Uh, so they have about 674 officers who've been claimed uh, to have been involved in human rights abuses. Uh, of that, I think about 19 have been fired. The rest have been given very light administrative uh, penalties. Not a single one has been convicted or tried in court and convicted of, of human rights abuses. So, but, but is it a clear link, in your view, that the, the, the drug policy is linked to these, these killings? I mean, obviously, we don't exactly know, but is it your impression that that's what's happening here? Uh, it's too early to say. However, uh, the, one of the, the first mayor that was killed was uh, thought to have ended up on the government's drug watch list, and people who end up on that list often turn up dead. Uh, but it's not the first. But at the same time, he was a tough on drugs mayor uh, who emulated President Duterte, who said he, he you know, admired him uh, and would, uh, you know, subjugate his citizens uh, to public humiliation and other strong arm tactics in order to carry out his own uh, law and order policies. However, that's not unusual around the world. We've seen throughout Latin America, for instance, uh, local mayors who, uh, protect, who, who make a show of being tough on the war on drugs were, in fact, involved in the drug trade themselves. They were simply protecting their own monopolies. So it's too early to say uh, what exactly the context of this was in the Philippines. And overall, how effective is this, this new policy that Duterte has brought in? Is it, is it making any difference in terms of the, the amount of drugs out there? Not very much, no. Uh, but in fact, uh, you know, the opposition senators claim uh, over 20,000 people have been killed in his drug war in the past two years. Human Rights Watch puts that figure at above 12,000. Uh, the police will only admit to 4,200 of them or so. Uh, but a lot of people are getting killed. There is no justice for these people. Uh, and President Duterte has said just recently that uh, families can expect no justice from him if they were even suspected of being involved in the drug trade. Uh, so this is an open season. What's going on in the Philippines, it, it seems to me, is much more of a pogrom, uh, like in 19th century uh, uh, Russia and Eastern Europe, uh, less than a, you know, rather than a modern drug war. Um, this is really about taking a cornucopia of social ills, many of which are structural in nature, and pinning it onto one little demographic group and saying, look, if we just get rid of these people, just eliminate them, uh, things will be wine and roses again. And we see a lot of autocrats and despots around the world use those kinds of tactics uh, to further their own uh, political power. We've seen that in the United States, for instance, with President uh, Trump uh, going after MS-13, the, the Mexican gang. Uh, Hitler did it to Jews. Um, it's about scapegoating a minority group for a whole basket of social ills. San Hotri, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts on the subject. Thank you. Thank you.